Hey, fourth graders, Mr. Klingon back with uh, another chapter of Number of the Stars by Lois Lowry. Um, now, we're going to be reading part of chapter four today. So if you haven't already um, listened to chapters one, two, and three, uh, please make sure that you go back and listen to those first. Okay, so we're going to read the first part of chapter four. Now, if you remember where we left off, um, Anne-Marie was lying in bed and she was thinking to herself, um, would I really die to protect uh, Denmark's Jews, like her good friend Ellen and her family? Okay, would she really be a bodyguard for them and, and try to protect them? Okay, so that's where he left off. Now we're chapter four. It will be a long night. Alone in the apartment while Mama was out shopping with Kirsty, Anne-Marie and Ellen were sprawled on the living room floor playing with paper dolls. They had cut the dolls from Mama's magazines, old ones she had saved from past years. The paper ladies had old-fashioned hairstyles and clothes, and the girls had given them names from Mama's very favorite book. Mama had told Anne-Marie and Ellen the entire story of Gone with the Wind, and the girls thought it much more interesting and romantic than the king and queen tales that Kirsty loved. Come, Melanie, Anne-Marie said, walking her doll across the edge of the rug. Let's dress for the ball. All right, Scarlet, I'm coming, Ellen replied in a sophisticated voice. She was a talented performer. She often played the leading roles in school dramatics. Games of imagination were always fun when Ellen played. The door opened and Kirsty stomped in, her face tear-stained and glowering. Mama followed her with an exasperated look and set a package down on the table. I won't, Kirsty sputtered. I won't ever, ever wear them. Not if you chain me in a prison and beat me with sticks. Henry giggled and looked questioningly at her mother. Mrs. Johansson sighed. I bought Kirsty some new shoes, she explained. She's outgrown her old ones. Goodness, Kirsty, Ellen said. I wish my mother would get me some new shoes. I love new things, and it's so hard to find them in the store. Not if you go to a fish store, Kirsty bellowed. But most mothers wouldn't make their daughters wear ugly fish shoes. Kirsten, said mother, mother, mama, mama said soothingly, you know it wasn't a fish store, and we were lucky to find shoes at all. Kirsty sniffed. Show them, she commanded. Show Anne-Marie and Ellen how ugly they are. Mama opened the package and took out a pair of little girl's shoes. She held them up and Kirsty looked away in disgust. You know there's no leather anymore, Mama explained. But they found a way to make shoes out of fish skin. I don't think these are too ugly. Anne-Marie and Ellen looked at the fish skin shoes. Anne-Marie took one in her hand and examined it. It was odd looking. The fish scales were visible, but it was a shoe and her sister needed shoes. It's not so bad, Kirsty, she said, lying a little. Ellen turned the other one over in her hand. You know, she said, it's only the color that's ugly. Green, Kirsty wailed. I will never ever wear green shoes. In our apartment, Ellen told her, my father has a jar of black, black ink. Would you like these shoes better if they were black? Kirsty frowned. Maybe I would, she said finally. Well then, Ellen told her. Tonight, if your mama doesn't mind, I'll take the shoes home and ask my father to make them black for you with his ink. Mama laughed. I think that would be a fine improvement. What do you think, Kirsty? Kirsty pondered. Could he make them shiny? She asked. I want them shiny. Ellen nodded. I think he could. I think they'll be quite pretty, black and shiny. Kirsty nodded. All right, then, she said. But you mustn't tell anyone that they're fish. I don't want anyone to know. She took her new shoes, holding them disdainfully, and put them on a chair. Then she looked with interest at the paper dolls. Can I play too? Kirsty asked. Can I have a doll? She squatted beside Anne-Marie and Ellen on the floor. Sometimes, Anne-Marie thought, 
Kirsty was such a pest, always butting in. But the apartment was small. There was no other place for Kirsty to play. And if they told her to go away, Mama would scold. Here, Anne Marie said, and handed her sister a cut out little girl doll. We're playing Gone with the Wind. Melanie and Scarlet are going to a ball. You can be Bonnie. She's Scarlet's daughter. Kirsty danced her doll up and down happily. I'm going to the ball, she announced in a high pretend voice. <laughs> Ellen giggled. A little girl wouldn't go to a ball. Let's make them go someplace else. Let's make them go to Tivoli. Tivoli, Anne-Marie began to laugh. That's in Copenhagen. Gone with the wind is in America. Tivoli, 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 little Kirsty sang, twirling her doll in a circle. It doesn't matter because it's only a game anyway, Ellen pointed out. Tivoli can be over there, by that chair. Come, Scarlet, she said, using her doll voice. We shall go to Tivoli to dance and watch the fireworks. But maybe there will be some handsome men there. Bring your silly daughter Bonnie and she can ride on the carousel. Anne-Marie grinned and walked her scarlet toward the chair that Ellen had designated as Tivoli. She loved Tivoli Gardens in the heart of Copenhagen. Her parents had taken her there often when she was a little girl. She remembered the music and the brightly colored lights, the carousel and ice cream, and especially the magnificent fireworks in the evenings, the huge colored splashes and bursts of lights in the evening sky. I remember the fireworks best of all, she commented to Ellen. Me too, Kirsty said. I remember the fireworks. Silly, Anne-Marie scoffed. You never saw the fireworks. Tivoli Gardens was closed now. The German occupation forces had burned part of it, perhaps as a way of punishing the fun-loving Danes for their light-hearted pleasures. Kirsty drew herself up, her small soldier stiff. I did too, she said belligerently. It was my birthday. I woke up in the night and I could hear the booms and there were lights in the sky. Mama said it was fireworks for my birthday. Then Anne-Marie Anne remembered. Kirsty's birthday was late in August and that night, only a month before, she too had awakened and frightened by the sounds of the explosions. Kirsty was right. The sky in the southeast had been ablaze, and Mama had comforted her by calling it a birthday celebration. Imagine such fireworks for a little girl five years old, Mama had said, sitting on their bed, holding the dark curtain aside to look through the window at the lighted sky. The next evening's newspaper had told the sad truth. The Danes had destroyed their own naval fleet blowing up the vessels one by one as the Germans approached to take over the ships for their own use. How sad the king must be, Anne-Marie had heard Mama say to Papa when they read the news. How, how proud, Papa had replied. It made Anne-Marie feel sad and proud too, to picture the tall aging king, perhaps with tears in his blue eyes, as he looked at the remains of his small navy, which now lay submerged and broken in the harbor. I don't want to play anymore, Ellen, she said suddenly, and put her doll, paper doll on the table. I have to go home anyway, Ellen said. I have to help Mama with the house cleaning. Thursday is our new year. Did you know that? Why is it yours? asked Kirsty. Isn't it our new year too? No, it's the Jewish new year. That's just for us. But if you want, Kirsty, you can come that night and watch Mama light the candles. Anne Marie and Kirsty had often been invited to watch Mrs. Rosen light the Sabbath candles on Friday evenings. She covered her head with a cloth and said a special prayer in Hebrew as she did so. Anne Marie always stood very quietly, awed to watch. Even Kirsty, usually such a chatterbox, was always still at that time. They didn't understand the words or the meaning, but they could feel what a special time it was for the Rosens. Yes, Kirsty agreed happily. I'll come and watch your mama light the candles, and I'll wear my new black shoes. All right, that's where we're going to pause for today. Um, make sure if your teacher has assigned you some questions for this part that you do those. Thanks.